Hey guys, what's up? It's the Electrical DIY Coach, and today we're going to be doing a full install. I'm going to teach you how to convert this into having a switch and receptacle setup. So we're going to take a look at this now. I'm going to teach you step by step, every step of the way. Before we get started, never work on the energized circuit, never work in an energized panel, never repeat anything in these videos, and just use it for educational purposes only. So let's go ahead and jump into it. So let's say you come to this location. We happen to be in a bathroom, and there, there's no receptacle around the bathroom, right? So let's look at this location here. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make sure that the power is off by turning the you know, the light on and, you know, flipping the breakers and fuses until we get the light off. Then we're going to go back and we're going to check with a minimum of two forms to make sure that it's off. And let's do that now. So the first thing that we're wanting to check for once we verify that power is off is that we are wanting to see if there is power in the box. Just because you have a switch box does not mean that there's power inside of that box. Now, this job could be fairly easy or it can be pretty difficult. So we're going to find out which version we get to do today. So now that I've got that off, I'm going to check this. I'm gonna take a peek in the box and see if anything's funny going on. I have no power to the terminals and we'll do our second check here in just a second. So I'm gonna go ahead and back these out, okay? And very carefully, I feel like there's no power in the box, but sometimes there's multiple circuits in the box or sometimes you're just not getting a good reading. So what we're gonna do is, is the first thing we're gonna do is always verify the power's off. So let's take this out, let's pull this out right here and let's pull this out make sure we're not touching anything we're going to make sure there's only one cable in this box so that means one you know set of wires so i'm good here i have no extra power we're also going to pull our electrical meter out and we're going to verify that it's dead so there is a good ground in the back of the box it looks like okay i have no power and we're going to check voltage here and I've got zero volts. So I'm, I'm confident this is off. For one, I turned it off with the breaker and saw the light go off. I checked it with my non-contact voltage checker, and then I checked it with my voltmeter. So now I feel like this is off. Now here's the question. I'm wanting to add a receptacle by here. That's what we're gonna do today. If there's power in this box, it's simply just converting it over with no big deal, right? But let's go ahead and take a look and see what we found. All right, so in this case, we find out that there is no power inside the box. Now what this is, and I'm getting ready to shoot you another video explaining it, is this is an old school switch loop. That means they've done the power up in the light, and then they've sent it back down on the white wire and returned it back on this one to turn the light on. So they've done an old school switch light, so I literally have one cable inside this box, meaning that I have no constant hot, and I also do not have a neutral. So that's gonna add a little bit of a challenge to our project. We're gonna do the same steps, but what it's gonna require me is to bring another circuit to this box or a wire from this bathroom, another part of the bathroom. I'm gonna have to pull a new one, a new circuit in this case, and then we're gonna be able to remake this box back up. We're gonna take the same steps. It's just gonna be a little bit more difficult because we have to add the wire instead of converting the wire over and making a switch and receptacle, which I'll cover in another video. But this is actually the harder scenario, so if you can get this one you can get them all remember never touch an energized circuit and i uh, never repeat anything in these videos i'm very excited to be with you guys today let's go ahead and get to it all right, so the next thing that we're going to do now that we verify that hey we don't have power here now we just got to deal with it right so let's go ahead and deal with it so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to cut this switch loose and we are actually gonna get ready to tape this wire black. Cause when we put it back, we wanna know that this white wire is a hot one. Now it was supposed to be taped when they put it in. That may not have been the code back in the you know 60s or whatever when they did it. But if I were to do this technique today, I would be required to make this wire and tape it black for the simple reason. So somebody knows it's a hot when they come to the box. So let's go ahead and grab our tape here. And what we're gonna do is, is we're just gonna take a second and always identify your wires. Don't ever get in a hurry. You can, you can hurry if you want to through some of the labor part, some of the physical part, but when it comes to all of the technical things, you slow down and you make sure you got your button gear, okay? So I slow down, I make sure I take this wire back so I don't accidentally add it to a different bundle and end up with a, you know, a result that I'm not looking for. So the way, the way that I teach you things, for one, you're never gonna have any callbacks if you're doing this professionally. For two, if this you're doing yourself, you're never gonna have any question if it's done right. If you just stick to the script, follow the, you know, the process, follow the method you're going to end up with a good result every single time so let's go ahead and get to this now so here we are so now we find ourselves we're wanting to take this single gang and we're wanting to turn it into a two gang but before we make any moves we got to do a little bit of pre-checking okay so let me grab some tools here and what we're going to do is we're going to find out which side the stud's on so I can tell that the stud is the stud is on this side but that that does not mean that this is clear over here so the first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to come right down to the corner of the existing box I'm just gonna knock a little hole. And I'm gonna wiggle around in there to see how I feel about it. Feels pretty good. I don't have any depth issue. 
doesn't feel like I have anything side to side. Now that's not a guarantee, but it, um, and I've taught you in other videos how to guarantee and we're actually gonna employ some of those tactics now. So now the next step to do is this, is we're gonna take our pencil and what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our box and we are going to, let me get you a shot here. We're gonna take our box and we're gonna line it up with the left hand edge because our stud is to the left. And what we're gonna do is, is we are going to put a small mark right here at the edge of the box, okay? Coming away from the stud. So I've took this edge, my stud is going that way, so I'm gonna line my box up with the edge of the existing box going away from the stud, and I'm just gonna put a little niche mark right there, and I do it in pencil. And the reason I'm not drawing the whole thing out yet is because remember I've taught you in the past, you always cut left to right first. Because if, if I were to hit something, I could stop. But if you instantly start cutting up and down, you are committed to making that hole there. So let's go ahead and get our saw ready and we'll get ready to cut this left and right first to make sure we don't hit anything. All right, so we got our saw ready. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start right up at the top level of the box, okay? I start just level with the existing box and I'm just gonna gently cut. Now, I, I purposely snipped this off. This is a brand new knife and I purposely cut it off so I don't hit anything inside of walls. And the reason I do that is um, because I was uh, cutting in a two floor situation. There was tons of things in the ceiling. So I cut it off on purpose. But what we're gonna do here is I've cut this off. Now, when I cut this right here, I'm only gonna put this much of the saw blade inside the wall. You could cut into gas, you could cut into plumbing, you could cut into, cut into all kinds of things, electrical. So I literally just put no more than the saw blade than it takes to cut through that drywall. If it's, you know, you know, whatever the scenario is, and I always cut it by hand, you don't get in there like a wild man or a wild woman cutting with a, there you go. Now I've completely cut. Now, very gently, I can take this saw and I can stick it in and go all the way back. I am completely clear. Now what I'm free to do is I'm free to take my box and finish tracing it out. So I line my top up and my left hand side because my bottom may need to be deeper, okay? And I'm gonna go ahead and finish tracing this out because I have pre-cut and I found out that there's nothing in the wall. So I'm gonna start a little bit over. This box is a lot shallower, so mine's gonna to have to be a little bit deeper. I can go ahead and start all the way over very carefully. And I'm gonna finish cutting this box out completely. And the reason we do this first, all this is gonna be covered by a face plate, so it's not a huge deal. There we go. All right. But the reason we do this first is so I have plenty of room to pry the box out. Because I've got to pry. The only thing you got to be careful when you cut your tips off is when you're starting it. Right. Now, I'm in there. See if I can grab this piece. All right, I got it. Sweet. I've got a huge cavity in there, so I am totally good to go. Now, let's go ahead and look at this box. So, the reason I cut this out first is now I have tons of room to work, right? So, I've, I've got to pry this out. I've got to get the old box out. And how we're going to start is we're going to start just like this. So, let me see if I can get one of my longer flatheads in here. So, I'm going to go ahead and take this clamp completely out. We're going to be disregarding this box completely, right? And I'm using my left hand. I'm not left-handed, and I was trying to look at the camera for a second. So let's go ahead and take this out. Just completely remove it. It's a little bit thicker on the end. That way it tries to hold it in for you. We don't need it held in. All right. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a minute, and I'm going to work that table out. And now that I can get my hand around here, I can actually finesse it a little bit better. If you see my ground is kind of attached there, I'm going to go ahead and unfasten that. And then I'm literally going to come in here with a flat head or another tool if I have to, and I'm going to pry these nails out. Because what these nails are doing are coming in through the side and they're screwing into a stud. So I'm going to go ahead and work on prying that out now. And when I get that pried out, I'll catch back up with you. All right, so now we got it out. So I got it out, and this is what it looked like. What they did is they literally used to take these and they would put them through the back and then nail them in from the side, right? So this is what it looks like when we get it all out. Everything's nice, neat, and clean. I have my existing switch leg, which is going to go back just like it was. Now we're going to get ready to pull a circuit over here. Now, I have taught you in the past how to drill, uh, you know, from up above and all these different things. In this case, I actually have a drop ceiling, which is going to make this job hopefully a lot easier. But what I'm going to do is now I'm going to show you guys kind of my scenario. I've got a route up, up and over and up and down into this panel and this is where we're going to bring it into the new panel so what we're going to do now is is go ahead and take a little bit of time and we are going to run this romex we're going to get it up and over get it installed get everything nice tight right and true and then we are going to drop it down in the box and then we'll pick up with you on how to hook this all up let's get right, guys i got my wire in so we are ready for the next leg so what we're going to do is just take our box and we have two uh cables so we're just going to poke out two holes they're both coming in the top i like to use my uh, uh cutters 
my wire strippers, but you can, you know, use a uh, flathead screwdriver. You can use another screwdriver. I've just got used to doing it. And what we're going to want to do is knock these holes out so we can slide our Romex in. I'm going to clean them up a little bit there. And then we're going to go ahead and start working our wires in. Now, the number one thing that you want to do on all of these tab boxes, these ones aren't as bad, but I would do it on all of them, is just go ahead and pre-work this tab. Now, if you've never seen these, I've te taught you extensively how to use these uh, on other videos on the channel. But what this is, this is just a box that is going to slide in, and these tabs are going to draw to the drywall, and it's going to hold it in place. But these tabs are sometimes real sticky, and if you don't get this thing just right, it'll want to pull out of the wall. So I go ahead and work them back and forth and kind of pre-work them and get them warmed up. Now, if you buy the blue ones, um, from one of the big box stores, you have to do it every time or you're going to end up in a nightmare. So I now take this wire, I'm going to work it in, and then we're going to talk about the next step, which is super important um, technically. Now, everything that you do, especially in your modeling, you try to make it look as pretty as you can and all that stuff, and, and I'm all about that. But when it comes to being technically excellent is what I want all of your work to be. Nobody on this channel, we're not going to allow you guys to be average DIYers. If you're going to do it, we're going to do it right. Let's get to it, right? So, all right, let's go ahead and uh, gently work this thing in and beautiful now we can go ahead and proceed to use these i often will use a drill on these because you do not want to stop the pressure if you notice i'm using two hands because the reason is if you stop the pressure sometimes that little tab will fall down on you but a lot of times i'll even use a drill i very rarely use drills but on things like this i will but as long as you don't stop the pressure you keep two hands moving this box is going to work in your favor Awesome. Now what we're going to do is go ahead and get ready to strip the Romex and do, you know, arguably the most important part of this install is what I'm getting ready to show you next. So make sure you stay tuned. So let's go ahead and get our knife out. Remember, I've taught you previously in the past, you never under any circumstance want to take a knife or a razor blade in the back of this box under any circumstance because you often will strip the wire or excuse me, cut the wire while you're trying to strip it. And you don't notice it then, but 20 years later when I come back or another DIYer comes back, they stick their hand in there and that, that thing has got a slit in it, okay? So what I want you guys to do is this. Always, every time you strip Romex, it's just like this. Boom, just slit the end. And then you take it and you work it back, okay? Never under any circumstance use one of the tools that pre, you know, that do it quickly. Not saying you can't use them. You just gotta be very careful. And this is from experience. There's, you know, other people on YouTube that'll tell you do this and do that. They're not licensed electricians. Not saying they're not good people, but if you're going to be a pro, learn from the pros. Let's get to it. All right, so I'm working this out. I've got my Romex. Now, here's the most important step of this whole process on this one. Okay, so we have two different circuits, right? We have the original bathroom circuit, and then we have the new circuit that I pulled in. So logic may tell you, hey, let's keep these grounds separate, right? Because they're two different circuits. We don't want, you know, something going on. The code states that all available grounds must be bonded together. So what we're actually going to do is we are going to take this and we are going to tie the one circuit that was existing with the new circuit. We're going to tie those two grounds together. And since we have a two gang box, we need two pigtails coming from it. Now, if this wire was long enough, we could use a crimper and, you know, go from there. We could crimp it and leave two tails and be fine. In this case, this wire is a little bit short. So I'm actually going to make a ground jumper. So I'm going to take two ground wires about six to 10 inches long, and I'm going to cut Cut this off even, and I'll show you what it looks like when I get it all made up. And I'm going to cut this all even, and I'm going to twist. And I've taught you this many times in other videos. And I'm going to twist it all together, and I'm going to have two jumpers coming off of it because I have two devices because this is a two-gang box. Let me get this all set up, and then I'll show you what it looks like when it gets all done. I wanted to take a minute and show you this if you guys hadn't seen one of my previous videos teaching you how to make pigtails. So um, what we're going to do is we're going to get both the wires, and we're going to get them cut off about the same length. Where, where they're easy to work with. And what I, what I have here is I have one long ground and I'm actually gonna cut it into two, okay? Now I have two grounds. I'm gonna go ahead and make them nice and neat and straight. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and kind of pre-start our ones that we're wanting to add. All right, so I kind of get those pre-started and then I'm gonna put a pre-bend in it just so I can hold a pressure on the pivot point. Now I'm just gonna kind of start pre-working these with my hands, right? Just kind of line them up nice and easy. Now I take my clients. This is a gentle move very gentle especially that other wire is old it's smaller all right just nice and gentle until i get a nice textbook braid and then i will cut that off and then i always double check it to make sure i'm nice neat and clean and if i got to cut it off again like this time i will do it now what i'm going to do is i'm going to put a cap on it that's all you should be doing with a wire nut is just capping the wire okay we're not making the mechanical connection with the wire nut i want my connection solid and then that's just putting a nice cap on it. 
any wire that I'm ever dealing with that I have to work with later, meaning that I have to move it in and out, I always tape it. So I'll start back here on the neck. And all this is providing for me is a little bit of grace while I'm working trying to hook these devices up. So I take this and then I'll run a little bit around the cap and I pull it nice and neat. Now what that's gonna do is that's gonna provide me with a jumper to go to each device. And now I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna turn it and I'm gonna bend it nice and neat in the back of the box. I've got tons of room. Then I'm even gonna pre-bend my ground. So I'm gonna have my switch on the left-hand side because this side is closer to the sink. I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna bend it in the back and I'm gonna set it there and in a minute I'll curl it. Same thing with this one. I'm gonna work it over to the left and then the right and it's gonna be on the bottom because I'm putting in a GFCI receptacle. Now, if this were in any other location, I would need AFCI protection, but the bathroom is one of the last places where you do not have to have AFCI protection stemming from the panel. I, however, today, I am going to install an AFCI GFCI receptacle just because I love the technology, although I'm not required to do it. So this is a dual function receptacle. I had a whole series last week or the week before on these, teaching you guys all about these and how to use them and why we use them. But this is an AFCI GFCI receptacle. Obviously, I'm not going to use this faceplate because I'm going to need a switch GFCI faceplate. So now what we're going to do, guys, is we are going to um, start with the switch. So we're just going to come over here. I have lots of videos teaching you how to do switches and receptacles. Okay, but we're going to go ahead and do it right now. So I strip back about three quarters, approximately three quarters of five eighths uh, wire. And both of these are going on the right hand side. So I'm gonna curl them both uh, right under, like so. And beautiful. That was a little bit long. Sometimes when you get in there and you feel, it's kind of hard to see at my angle. That was a little bit long. So I'm gonna cut that back a little bit. And just always don't stop until you get your curl exactly where you want it. And these wire strippers are not my favorite. I like it where the, the curl is up here on this part right here. All right, that one's ready. Now I'm gonna take my, uh, I'm gonna take my Klein dogs here and I'm gonna straighten this wire out. I put fresh strippings on them. I'm gonna go ahead and cut it back a little bit. I can tell you right now, I've gotta cut it back. And then I'm gonna use these strippers to get a nice curl. I'm gonna finish the curl on the switch on this side. I didn't get it as far over. And I'm kind of in a bind here with short wires. All right, good. Now this one will be easy, it's nice and long. I'm gonna curl left over because that's on the left-hand side of the switch. Same thing here on this side. I'm going to, uh, these are all gonna be straight because I'm using a GFCI receptacle. So let's go ahead and prep them. And up in the right-hand side, leave myself a little bit of grace room, then I'm gonna strip it back. I'm gonna strip off approximately a half inch depending on my brand. And I'm gonna teach you how to install that in just a second. I have lots of videos teaching you how to install these guys. I'm gonna go ahead and just add it in this video just so you can see the whole install here. But I have lots of videos with lots of little tr uh, tips and tricks on how to make your curls and stuff how to make them look nice, neat, and pretty. I taught you that early on in the game. That way you'd be a pro DIYer. All right, now I'm ready. We're gonna go ahead and do the device first. Let's see where I set it down here. I set it right here. All right, now if you've never hooked up a GFCI, there's gonna be what's called a line and a load, right? So the line is gonna be the power in and the load would be the power out if you were going somewhere else. In this case, I don't know why these cheap lights uh, jiggle. I don't know if you guys can see that on camera. These cheaper lights, and they're not cheap, uh, are uh, been jiggling lately. You gotta hit them a little bit to make them stop. All right, so with that being said, we pretty much live with a headlamp on. So in this case, um, remember I've taught you all these fundamentals in the past. Uh, right hand side, small hole, black on brass. Left hand side, uh, white on silver. And then we're gonna do our ground on the bottom. I've taught you all this previously, but I just wanna go over it again. And then we're not gonna be touching the load side of this device, right? Because we don't have any load, we only have line. We only have line going in. So I come here, I come here, I come on the right hand side. I check my wire to make sure the stripping is long enough. It is. I wanna make sure that I get just enough to get behind the screw. And the biggest thing with GFCI is I'm gonna show you here in just a second or any type of uh, device that has the terminal. I don't know why this one's wanting to be a stinker today. I'm gonna to go ahead and loosen it all the way up. There we go. Any type of device that has a terminal, I'm gonna show you the two tricks here. So first off, I want to see that copper right here at the front. I'm going to zoom in and show you. I want to see that copper right here at the front. As long as I can see that, then I know that I've got it far enough in. If it's slid behind there and I can't see it, then it's not far enough in. And I want to make sure I'm not sticking out the back with the copper. And I also want to make sure that this uh, black insulation or whatever color is not encroaching on the clamp itself, right? So I don't want it to be pushing any back pressure on it on that side. Now, what I do is, is I go ahead and just gently tighten them because I'm 
I'm getting ready to put the, put the torque screwdriver on them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to the next side. I've also shot a video of why and where to get your torque screwdriver on this channel if you want to check that out. While you're waiting, if you want to hit that like and subscribe button, that would be greatly appreciated. If you've not seen my Electrical Code Coach channel, it's designed to help you become everything that you can be in life and in the electrical industry. It's a totally different channel that is geared to help you get your electrical license and dive deeper in the code if you're interested in that. This channel is all about helping you just be a pro. So, all right, we're going to go ahead and do the same thing on the left side following the same rules. This brand's a little, you're going to have to back these out a little bit on this brand, but every single brand is a little bit different. All right, once I back that out, I'm following all the same rules. I can see the conductor coming through the front. I wanna make sure it's not pinching up on the plastic. And then at the same time, I don't have any sticking out of the back past the device. And I'm making sure that my insulation is not um, sticking on there. And then same thing on the ground. I went ahead and hooked the ground up, so you just slide the ground into the bottom. I just did it, we did it without even thinking about talking to you guys. So yeah, same thing. I wanna make sure that I can see the copper here, okay? I want to make sure I can see the copper here, and I want to make sure it's not poking out the back. I want to make sure it's uh, good, and I just kind of get it started, and then I'm going to come down here, and I'm going to get my torque screwdriver. I'm going to set it to the torque spec, and that's going to let me know that this thing is perfectly tight. So let's go ahead and get it set to the torque spec. I'm going to turn the device back around, and I always count. Okay, one. I have three connections on this one, so I count, and I know when I get to three that I'm done. Two. Let's see if get this thing in here two and three if I had wires on this screw and this screw I'd be counting up to five on this one all right so that is done I'm gonna wait to bury it I typically wait to bury the first device just in case having this one loose helps me with this other one especially since these other wires are shorter I want to go ahead and have as much grace on that as I can so I'm gonna pre-bend all my wires I've got everything set I'm gonna leave this just so it's set I'm just gonna leave it set for right now then I'm going to go ahead and get my new switch out. I've got it laying here. Oh, this is a three-way. Let me go grab a single pole and we'll be right. All right, guys, so I grabbed us a single pole switch. I had accidentally grabbed a three-pole, uh, three-pole, uh, three-way switch. What we're going to do is these wires are kind of short, so you just take your time. I'm going to go ahead and hook up my ground first just because it's convenient on this one. And I'm going to set it up. I'm going to go ahead and add a little pinch to it. Don't, I don't go crazy just in case I ever got to pull it back off, but I do get it to where it helps in my, in my curl effect. All right, got that pre-tightened. And then I'm just going to go here. I start with the, whatever one I've got in my hand. Doesn't really matter. No rhyme or rhythm. And I've got that nice. It's got a nice hook. I don't have to pinch this one down. Some people pinch them down every time. But I find that if you have to pull it back off, it can give you trouble. All right, so. And let me see here. Back that screw out just a little bit more where the wires are shorter. Just want to put a, put a bind on it. That older insulation is a little bit thicker. I'm going to put a little bit of a pinch on this one. All right. But I didn't cinch it around the screw to where it puts it in a bind if I've ever got to take it off. All right. Now I'm going to take and we are going to use our torque screwdriver here to put the torque on it. Make sure I'm at my torque spec. Good to go. All right. Now what we're gonna do is pr to proceed with uh, burying these in the box, checking everything. Biggest thing that you wanna watch out for anytime you bury a device is you, uh, is you are gonna wanna make sure that none of your ground wires curl back up and touch any of your hot. So I always take my time and pre-bury them. So before I even start screwing these screws in, I'll physically shove them in, make sure all my wires are not you know, touching each other, make sure that you know nothing's going on here. If you wanted to, you could tape both of these devices. In this case, in my opinion, it's unnecessary. Um, but if I was using a metal box, typically I'll tape it up. There's nothing wrong with taping it up. I've taught you that just last week in previous videos. And I'm gonna make sure that none of the ground wires are curling up, especially with new arc fault and ground fault devices. Um, if even the neutral and the ground are touching, uh, they will trip. So I'm gonna take my time, make sure my grounds are bit out of the way. Then I'm gonna take my time and screw them in and we're gonna get ready to put the faceplate on. All right, guys, so we've got our faceplate on. we got everything looking nice, right, tight, and true. We're going to make sure that my faceplate screws are uh, straight before I get all done, and I'm also going to make sure that we clean up real nice. So I'm the electrical DIY coach, and uh, we also do the pro tip of the day, which is every day at 1030, I drop a new pro tip, and every day at 930 on my other channel, I do uh, what's called the electrical, uh, the electricians in action, where we get together and talk about the code. So you can have the best of both worlds. You can have the code, the DIY tips. I hope you guys have a great day. Let's go ahead and get to it. Also, before we jump off, we've always got to test our work. So get 
get yourself a classic GFCI checker. You plug it in here. Make sure that we got good polarity, and then we're going to test it. Boom, looks good. And then I always reset it, check it again, and then I always check on the device to make sure that test button works. So that should reset. I should have no power now. Great job. I hope you guys have a great weekend, and uh, let's go ahead and get to it.